I spent my entire life in your shadow. And now, you spend the rest of yours living in mine. No, no. As I, as you get older, <laughs> you start to question your sanity um, when you think about all the stunts that you've done and never questioned. My whole process of going into character is if if the director tells me to jump off a building, I'll jump. Off, I'm worried that I'll jump off a building because I go so deep in the character. So, no. An answer to your question. Uh, no stunt is too great. <laughs> um, and thank God, and let me take this moment to say this, thank God that I have such a great stunt team, uh, action sequence team, because they are so good at preparing weeks or sometimes months in advance to create that effect that you see for seconds on screen. No, you're right. Uh, <laughs> I remember we used to, after every Fast and Furious movie, at every uh, at every press junket, someone would ask how many cars. But after nine films, you almost <laughs> you almost don't even want to hear the number of cars that have gone in to creating these action sequences because you almost can't count anymore. Um, so yeah. So I guess I should wear that title with a badge of honor and at the same time say sorry to the world for uh, all the, to the car universe for all the cars that have gone and sacrificed their lives for your entertainment. It wasn't my idea. It was something that Justin Lin thought of. And uh, it was kind of brilliant, but kind of difficult in some ways because it's not, I wasn't able to sit behind the monitor and coach him. He had to do it himself. He had to rehearse with the other actors. He built the camaraderie with the other actors. He built his own brotherhood with the young Jacob and his own relationship with Jack Toretto in that scene. Uh, I was very, 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 very proud of the way that he approached his work. Um, and I, and I, like I said, I was in the moment. I was committed to the scene from a more emotional, reflective place. So I was, I had, he had to do it on his own. So I was very proud that he was not only able to do it on his own, but most importantly, I was proud of the dedication that he put into playing the role. If you would have asked me 20 years ago, if in 2021, we would be releasing a, a Fast and Furious with Dom being a father on our ninth chapter, I would have thought it was crazy. I would have thought it was unheard of. As you know, this franchise didn't have comic books that you could, or books or novels that were pre-written. It's a totally original IP. I, I'm very proud of the fact that Universal has supported following the evolution of these characters that have been adopted by the world. I'm very, very, very proud of that. Dom has been that character synonymous with family. When we think of Dom, we think of someone that's never turned his back on family, someone that promotes that, someone that believes in family either by blood 
or by bond. And what we realize is when we go back to that first scene in Fast and Furious, where he's talking to Brian O'Connor about that charger and why he's so scared to death of his father's car, we have no idea how deep it runs for Dom. And we have no idea that it also references not only the loss of his father, but the loss of his brother because of that broken brotherhood with Jacob and himself. It was very deliberate to contrast that with the return of Han, a brother of Dom's for 15, 20 years. As we know, at the end of Fast and Furious, Dom and Brian split ways. One will continue to be a cop, one will continue to be an outlaw. But during those moments of, uh, of being an outlaw, the brotherhood that he had was with Han, as we see later in the franchise. But that was a very deliberate note to show you how broken the brotherhood in the past was and compare it to the brother, the, to the joy of seeing his brother Han. Oh my God! <laughs> that is, uh, that's a, <laughs> my God. That, that question will take hours to answer. I don't think people realize that <laughs> something we've always done in Fast and Furious, and it, it might sound crazy, but we audition cars like one would audition actors. Because every, every car is supposed to represent something, an, a, an extension of a, a character in the movie, and an extension of a state of mind of that character, where that character's state of mind is at the moment. So it's one of the, one of the funnest things about starting fast is when we audition the cars. You know, it's a great question and a question I wish I could just give a, quick answer to, but I will say, I started acting when I was seven years old. And when I started acting, my father, not unlike Dom's father's love for cars, and Dom's obvious love for cars is similar and passed down, my father had a love for acting and passed that down to me. At dinner, there would often be other thespians other actors of his generation, part of the actor's studios, part of method acting. And he recently said to me, no one of that era would have ever anticipated playing a character in a movie for over 20 years. And not playing a character in a movie where you could disregard the chronology of the character or the evolution of the character. But to play a character, you knew Dom before he was a father. You were also watching my work in Fast and Furious before I was a father. It's fascinating how both are intertwined. I've learned so much from Dom and Dom has learned so much from Vin. Uh, a peaceful life is, is nice. A nice uh, uh, a life in the country is very beautiful. They're compelled, right? I mean, ultimately, the, they realize in order for them to have a peaceful life, the world needs to be right. And that's what motivates them into action. I guess I like it all. I mean, Fast and Furious gives me all the adrenaline I need. Making that movie and being a part of that franchise or any of the action films that I do give me so much adrenaline that when I'm not doing that, a peaceful life is a beautiful thing. It's like people often think about all the horrible things about the last year and the pandemic that we've all gone through together. But my God, I will never forget how lucky I am to have spent every day with my children and my family. And for the first time in a long time that I didn't have to spend most of the year on a set. And I was just able to be there for all of my children's birthdays and be there while my children are, are learning and be there to watch the, the, the best of my life grow.
I miss that so much. When you're making a movie, it's not, for, so I, like I said before, I grew up in the theater. When you're performing on stage, you get immediate gratification. You immediately see what your work does. When you're making movies, you're isolated making movies and you have to wait a year until you can hear the reaction of your work. I love that about going on tour and celebrating something that we've been working on for years. In fact, the Philippines is one of the top three premier experiences I have ever had in my life because it was so electric, because it was so spectacular, there's so much love. And that was at a time where we had just finished Fast Five, we were just coming back with Fast Six, the audience was just beginning to feel confident that we would show up every two years like a holiday. 